Welcome to the Center for Independent Studies. My name is Oliver Hartwig. I'm a research fellow here at the center. And today we have a very special guest at the center, the president of the Czech Republic, Professor Václav Kraus. Welcome, Mr. President. Good morning. As far as I understand, it's your third visit to Australia. You first came over in 1991, yeah. just after the end of communism in Europe. And then you visited again in 2001. And now, as I said, your third visit in 2011. Looking back over the past 20 years, Which country has actually changed more, Europe or Australia? Well, after three days in Australia, I'm, I'm not able to make a strong statement about Australia. I, I really don't know. And Europe, Europe, uh, what has changed is uh, my feeling about, about the things in Europe. You know, if we were just uh, after the fall of communism and everything looked very bright and uh, and uh, everything was much better than in the past. Now, after 20 years, I must say that there is some disappointment because the European society is much more controlled and regulated and administered and from above than I had expected at that time, 20, 20 years ago. So for us, the first decade was moving to the better world, the 1990s, but the second decade, was already in importing, uh, again, new socialism from Europe, which is something not very pleasant for us. But actually, <coughs> I just reread the speech you delivered to the center 20 years ago with the John Monifen lecture. And um, what is interesting, going back through that speech now, is that even in 1991, you could clearly see some of these developments happening in Europe that you're now complaining about. I must say, I have not tried to reread my, my <laughs> John von Eitner speech, so I have to check it. But um, you have been an early critic, for example, of European Monetary Union. You have yeah. been an early critic of Europe's move towards a supranational state. And when you're looking at the state of Europe today and the European monetary crisis, you must feel vindicated. Well, partly, partly, partly not, because I am not just an innocent observer from Sydney, Australia. I am, I am part of Europe. So, so for me, I would never, never advocate an approach as some of my compatriots used in the communist era, the worse, the better. It was never my, my approach, my, my attitude. So I don't think it, it will help to, to have more troubles in Europe that it will help. I, I, I'm not sure. So I am not quite happy with that. Uh, but the problem is that what is going on in Europe now is not just the crisis at the surface of, uh, of uh, the whole society. It's a deep structural crisis of, of the whole system. So that's the issue for me. It's the um, second deep structural crisis that you experience firsthand in your life. You saw the collapse of communism. Would you see parallels in today's crisis in Europe to the previous crisis of communism? I don't want to make uh, easy or cheap comparisons between between um, communism and the European Union now. Nevertheless, uh, uh, sometimes I, I have to say when I walk in, in Brussels through the corridors of the European Commission, I, I, I say it looks like the Comecon building in Moscow 30 years ago, very similar. Yeah. Uh, so there are similarities. And uh, Uh, the, the attempt to centralize the society and to mastermind the society from above is, of course, uh, in many respects similar. And for the Czechs, it's a big problem. We used to be, used to be organized uh, um, from, from Vienna for centuries. Then we spend time being organized from Moscow, and we don't like very much to be organized again from Brussels. And and uh, to say that in Moscow, uh, to say that in 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 Europe now would be would be they would try to to put me in prison almost for saying something like that. Nevertheless, this is this is our feeling. Do you think another parallel between uh, communism then and uh, European Union politics now is that there is a disconnect between the elites? It's always been an elite-driven project, this whole European Union, whereas I think on the ground you could probably encounter much more Euroscepticism. Well, I, in this respect, uh, we are in a worse situation in the, than in the past. Uh, 
Uh, I don't speak about the 1930s in, in Soviet Union or, or maybe even Czechoslovakia in the 1950s, but when I speak about the, the uh, last decades of communism, the disconnection between people on the one hand and political elites on the other was much bigger. There was no one true believer in communism in the 1970s and 80s in Czechoslovakia, no one. I remember I just provoked a group of Americans when they came in the year 1980 asking me whether people really believe in communism. I said, no, I don't know anyone in the country. I'm absolutely sure that there are more true believers in communism and Marxism at the University of California in Berkeley than in the whole communist Czechoslovakia. It, it was my saying in the 1980, you know. And uh, so the, the disconnection was much bigger. I'm afraid that, that the people in Europe these days much believe much more in the European Union that the people at, at, at that time <laughs> believed in communism. Well, they believe not just in the European Union, they believe in other things as well, such as climate change. And I know that you are a, a climate change skeptic or realist, rather. A realist. I don't like the term skeptic. Right. Uh, the or denier. <laughs> denier. <laughs> it's just another kind of labeling exercise. How, how do you see the climate change debate going in the European Union and uh, in Australia, actually? We're having a whole de big debate about the carbon tax that's about to be introduced. Uh, so first issue is uh, the, the situation in the Czech Republic. In this respect, the Czechs are skeptics. And they don't buy such stupid ideologies, and, and they don't believe in, in that. They, they, were, they were taught in the communist era not to believe in such nonsenses. So they are much more realistic and more pragmatic than and some people. And the communists also try to make the weather, is that right? Definitely. You know, I always have troubles how to translate into English the famous Czech slogan in Czech language. Uh, this was a communist slogan. Poručíme větru dešti. Helen could help me. We, we, we would rule the wind and rain. It was a communist slogan at that time. I don't know whether it sounds so well in English, uh, but in Czech it, it, it's, it's a very nice uh, slogan. You know. and, and we, as children, we, were, we, we lived in a world where the promises of the communists were such that they would rule the wind and rain. So, so the Czechs are skeptical because they don't believe in such nonsense. So, so that's the first issue. I am absolutely sure to make, a, to make an uh, opinion poll, we would be probably the, uh, the most opponents of the um, climate change doctrine in the world. You know, that's positive. And I would, I would uh, dare to say partly because of me, <laughs> <laughs> in this respect, uh, this is true. Europe and Australia, in, I don't know, I don't know where it is worse. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, I had a feeling that, um, that uh, in Europe the disconnection, to use your term, between the normal people and the political elites in this respect, not about Europeanism, but about uh, climate change, probably is stronger. Because I had a feeling that there is more unity in Australia in this respect. Australia was always a country full of all kinds of greens and all kinds of uh, environmentalists from my way of looking at it. Not so many were in Europe at that time. Now, after three days here, probably I'm in wrong places and meeting wrong people, but, uh, but uh, when I am here with you and with similar groupings in the last four days, uh, I see the disconnection between, between the people and, and the, the political elites. Uh, so I don't know, how is the real reality? In Australia, but I have here my sister-in-law, and um, and, uh, and she has three daughters, and um, and the three daughters have all of them, not three husbands, not three times three, but <laughs> but uh, uh, three times one uh, husbands, and I must say, all of them are horrified, all six of them are horrified 
by my ideas about climate change. You know, all of them, uh, in one way or another, are getting their their money uh, working for some environmental organizations, either connected with business or connected with the government. So all of them, all six of them, are fully on the side of your prime minister and the previous prime minister. Well, I think there is a very simple way to change all this, um, and that is you shouldn't wait another 10 years for your next visit to Australia, mm -hmm. but you should come back sooner and convince them of your good ideas. I am trying to do my best. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for your visit to the Centre for Independent Studies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.